Um, prayerfully, I will finish this up this night um, and so that we will go on to something else that the Lord has given me. So it's hindrances to prayer and something that we know that we need to make sure that when we are praying or when we are trying to get a prayer through. I don't know about you, but tonight I'm, you know, I'm just really, 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 really haunting in on my prayers being answered. Right. I don't want to go through life anymore just being satisfied. Well, or just saying, well, well, he didn't answer that prayer, so it must not be for me. Well, he didn't say anything, so I might as well just go on and move on. And a lot of times we have given up on God even before God is able to give us what we have prayed for. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I don't want to be in that, in, that, in that place anymore. But I am, you know, very glad to know that um, Jesus is alive and well. And I know that he does answer this prayer because he said, I, I answered this. I mean, even before you asked, he said, I already answered your prayers. Mm -hmm. So I understand that he's, he's, he answered this prayer. But am I in a place to receive the prayer, receive the answers? So tonight, I'm going to ride this horse long because I've talked on this over and over again about unforgiveness. And this is the number one thing that kills the relationship, not only kills your relationship with God, it's the number one thing that kills your relationship and your prayers. Unforgiveness is something that we must not harbor in our hearts because it has the ability to kill. It has the ability to, to, to stifle and to keep things from moving in your life because of unforgiveness. And one thing I know about unforgiveness it is the person who's holding the unforgiveness is the drinker of the poison. We are poisoning, you poison yourself every day because you're holding unforgiveness in your heart towards someone. So we're going to go amen to the scripture, uh, Matthew 5 and 23. Matthew 5 and 23. It says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there, and there remembers that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular place right here is something that really, 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 really stretches out to me because there are so many things that we can harbor in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Bible is telling us, because, because we can harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. It is an act of the will to relinquish the unforgiveness. So he says come back to 23rd, so he comes, he says, um, therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remembers that thou hast an altar against thy brother. If you know that you have an altar against your brother, the Lord is asking you, let me put it like that, he's commanding you to come and take, bring it to the altar, get it right with your, with your brother, or hold your gift, because there's no use to you giving anything, trying to give anything to God, not even a praise, not even a worship, not even a prayer, not even uh, anything that, that, that can come close to relationship with him. There's nothing there. So he wants us to come as an act of the will of our own selves. See, because th this is what unforgive unforgiveness, forgiving people is not a feeling. That's right. It's not, That's not a feeling. You can't feel it. And a lot of people are looking for a feeling. Right. And they feel like if they don't feel anything, right. then it must not be forgiven. Or that person didn't forgive me. Or that person uh, said he forgave me or she forgave me, <laughs> but I don't feel like they did. Right. It's not a feeling. Yeah. That's an emotional response. Yeah. Un uh, forgiveness is an act of your will, the violation of your will. Right. To do it because the scripture says do it. Mm -hmm. To forgive one another, love one another. So he's telling us to do these things. And the reason why he's telling us to do these things is because there is something that we must do in order to bring the scriptures to pass. And even right here, a lot of people hold a lot of stuff in their hearts against people. And they're still trying to do God. They're still trying to love God. They're still trying to pray. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to... And, and see, I mean, you can do all these things. But it does not negate your unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Or that what you're doing is not working because you got, still got unforgiveness in your heart against your brother or whoever you got unforgiveness toward. So he comes and tells us that we need to bring the gift, bring that, take that gift, let it rest at the altar, let it rest wherever it needs to rest. In other words, get it together 
Come on, let's reason together. Come on, let's reason together. If you got an altar against me, come and to me and let's get it together. That's true. Yeah. Let's let's deal with it. Don't and this, and this is the thing, you know. I, I think when people walk around with unforgiveness in their heart, trying to trying to push it under, under the rug, trying to uh, 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 act like it don't exist. Very good. Act like it don't exist. Um, laugh it off, play it off, or whatever the case may be. They, they, it's always something they're trying to do in order to get. It's almost like something icky on me. I'm trying to get it off. Right. That's what unforgiveness feels like. It's, it's icky. It's an icky feeling. And it's always ever before me. My unforgiveness is always ever before me. That thing is always ever before me. And that lets me know that, that I have not yet a, been able to forgive fully the individual who has done whatever has been done to me. But in order for me to overcome my unforgiveness is that I have, I have to do what the scripture tells me to do. Therefore, if thou bring thou gift to the altar and thou remembrance that brother hath ought against thee, leave it, the gift. The gift can, is not so much as a gift as a gift as you say, if you give somebody a gift. I would think what he's saying here, the gift of your prayers. The gift of your uh, your relationship with God, the gift of your relationship with people, the gift of your relationship with the Word of the Lord, the gift of your relationship coming to church, the gift of your relationship worshiping and praising God. The gifts, right. or even your gifts, will not even work when you got unforgiveness. Amen. The nine gifts of the Spirit won't work when there's unforgiveness in your heart towards someone. So He tells us, He commands us to do something. And he commands us to do it because he knows that if I don't do it, if I don't act this out, then I really haven't forgotten. Right. Forg forgiven. I really haven't forgiven. And I haven't forgotten. And see, some people say, well, you just don't know what they did to me. I forgive them, but I don't forget. Come on now. But I ain't going to forget it. I, I forgive. I say, and, and you tell yourself all every day, I'll forgive, but I ain't going to forget. No, 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 no. In, in, in order to really, really get to the place where uh, forgiveness is, is, is saturated in you and through you, you've got to forgive and forget. Now, I'm not saying that you ought to just, just, well, let me, take, let me put it like this. It all depends on where you are in God. It all depends on where your level is. It all depends on how much you want God. It all depends on how much you want God to come in your life and to do whatever he wants to do in your life. That, that, that's how hard you'll push to be, to, uh, to be in a place of forgiveness. Okay. And a lot of people take for granted forgiveness. They take it for, 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 for granted because they feel like that they can keep on doing it because it is a hidden thing of the heart. And because it is a hidden thing of the heart, the individual that keeps walking in unforgiveness doesn't think that anything is happening to them or through them, wow. but it is. Amen. It's something. It's a slow. It's, it's a slow process. It's working. It's work. It's a working process. It's a slow process, but it is doing something. Yes, and so we have to make sure that we come and get it together. Amen. And that's how the body of Christ becomes. Unified, and that's the reason why. That's another reason why we're not unified. We can't become unified because we hold an unforgiveness toward one another. And when you hold and see, and this is the thing, you never understand. You never know why something happened, or you never know why that came about. If you don't ever sit down and reconcile Amen. that thing, well, I wonder why this happened to me. Well, it happened to you because you're you. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, I really can't even say nothing else because I thought about that thing because I was trying to figure out, I said, okay, God, just drop something. You got to drop something real quick because I can't think of nothing with, uh, to go with that. But, but it happened to you because it happened to you. It happened to you. So you mean to tell me I went through life and these things happened? Yes, these things happened to you. They happened to you because of choices you made. They happened to you because of rebellion that was in your life. They happened to you not because you were a bad person. They happened because circumstances and situations just happened to just be there and you just happened to be there too. And it just happened to happen to you. So what was happening in there was that the enemy was trying, was right then was trying to, to stop your level of 
receiving God. That's all he was doing. He didn't want you to receive God. So if you have all this stuff in your heart against individuals, then he, he knows that you're not going to receive thoroughly. You're not going to receive to the fullest. Because you can't. But he says, but if you leave there that gift before the altar and go that way, first be reconciled to the brother. And then come and offer that gift. Offer your gifts then. Yeah. So we want to make sure that that's not what's happening in our hearts. And, and that's not what we're walking in. We got to make sure that we do not have unforgiveness. Amen. Because a lot of times you can, you'll know if you have unforgiveness when you, when you get in the presence of the individual. Oh my God. And, and, and you start really, really... <clears throat> <clears throat> you start, you know, you know, tensing up. You start, you know, feeling something different. You start thinking about what they done did to you. All this stuff start coming back when you get in their presence. That would let, That's one way you could know that that you haven't forgiven. Yeah. Trust is another thing. You don't trust them. That's one way that you know that you haven't forgiven because you ain't You don't trust them. So with all of that in in, in, in place. You have to know how to reconcile yourself because it's more important to be reconciled to God than it is to be, to be holding on to forgiveness. Amen. Amen. God is more important to your life than the poison that we drink because of unforgiveness. Amen. And so we don't want to uh, be in unforgiveness. We don't want to walk in unforgiveness because we want our, 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 uh, uh, our way to God uh, to be, you know, passable. We want it to be quick. And we don't want it to be, excuse me, we don't want it to be stopped up with unforgiveness. Amen. You know, you know, you see a pipe, and it's and, and it's clogged up. You got drains clogged up, and you and and, and you, the water won't go through. Won't nothing go through it. That's the same way unforgiveness does in the spirit realm. It clogs up the pathway to God. Wow. It clogs it up until you find a way to uh, to unclog it. And the way you unclog it is that you voluntarily forgive, and you voluntarily forgive by faith. Amen. Take me to Mark um, eleven chapter. Mark eleven chapter. I want to uh, go down to, um, I think it's the last two verses, Mark 11, 20, oh, okay, Mark 11, oh, that's Matthew, Mark 11, because I'll, I'll go down and it says, uh, um, if you don't forgive your heavenly father, your heavenly, your father in heaven won't forgive you, Mark 11, in Mark 11 and um, 23, Mark 11, 23. And, and, and so this is so this is the reason why unforgiveness is connected to your faith. Your faith is not strong because of unforgiveness. I mean, because if you have unforgiveness, you have distrust. You don't trust, so you can't trust, so you can't have no faith. <laughs> the faith, the faith that you need to do whatever you, what God, whatever God is calling you to do. It says, when you stand praying, forgive, and if you have an alt against any, that your Father also, which in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. Amen. Now, if you look at your life and see how <laughs> on a daily basis, because, you know, none of us are without falling short of the glory of God. So we look at our lives, and so we have enough nerve to hold unforgiveness towards someone, and then we are walking around, and, and we are no better than they are. Amen. Our lives are no better than theirs, but we are holding unforgiveness against them. Right. That's not fair. Right. So he says, if you have all, if you if you have an all against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. That's right. So even in your prayers, your prayers are hindered because you are holding unforgiveness. Yeah, that's, true. that's the hindrance to prayer. Amen. And so if, if you don't get it right then these things will not come to pass in your life. Let's see what the 26th 26 verse says. But it says, But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So every time you hold unforgiveness towards someone, you are not forgiven for yours. Wow. And no man is without sin. So why, and, and, and that is so, why in the world would anybody want to hold unforgiveness in their heart towards someone when he says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you. Mm -hmm. So you're not even being forgiven and you're walking around here in an unforgiving state that your Father in heaven ain't forgiving you. Mm -hmm. But you're holding unforgiveness in your heart towards someone else. Mm -hmm. So that's a dangerous place to be in. Mm -hmm. 
And we are the people of God. We don't want to be in that place. So we choose not to hold unforgiveness in our heart toward anyone. I don't care what people have done to you. It's not that, that serious. Amen. For you to negate your forgiveness from your Father in heaven. Isn't, isn't that serious? No. I mean, I'm talking about these are two people on two feet. <laughs> two feet. <laughs> two feet walking around that, 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 that made you mad, that, 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 that got you struck, and you holding unforgiveness in your heart toward them. You don't like them. You, 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 you this, that, and the other toward them. And then you walking around uncovered yourself. Now, now you wow. uncovered. Wow. And that's what really the scripture is saying. I'm not going to, God's Father, my Father in heaven is not going to cover you until you get yourself together with your unforgiveness. Amen. Okay. So if I were you, mm. I wouldn't want to be walk, I wouldn't want to walk around being uncovered. Amen. But I want the Heavenly Father to cover my trans my trespasses, cover my uh, uh, my sins. My unforgiveness. I, I, I need for him to cover my forgiveness. I need for him to be there in my life because I understand if he's not, then I'm just out here by myself. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people are walking around with unforgiveness and not understanding that the Heavenly Father ain't forgiving you either. I mean, you got strong unforgiveness and he's turned his face against you. He's turned away from you. That he's not answering your prayers. There's no prayers being answered. I know that's what's wrong with the body of Christ now. I know that's why the lack of prayer answering is because the body of Christ is holding unforgiveness toward one another. The body of Christ is holding unforgiveness, period. It ain't got to be toward nobody. The body of Christ just holds unforgiveness. You stomp my toe. Or uh, are you... You can just come to me you can, I, I can just come to you and just the least little thing offend you and now you hold unforgiveness toward me because I, well, she didn't have to say it that way. But the truth was just the truth. And the truth will make you free. And that's what, and that's even what, 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 the, what the video was saying, what the young man was saying, that the church, if, if, when, we don't, when, when we don't speak the truth, we tolerate sin. Come on. And the church has come to a place where it just tolerate people. Don't want to tell the truth, want them to watch the television show, want them to fill their churches up and give them lollipop, popsicle <laughs> messages that just, what it says in, 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 uh, in, in, in Timothy, First Timothy, Timothy, Timothy says, where, where they come with engineers, hearing, wanting to hear what makes them feel good. Always want to hear the blessing. Oh, bless God gonna bless you with this, and God gonna bless you with that, and God gonna bless you with this, and God gonna bless you with that. But then what about your unforgiveness that you and your pastor know you holding it? Because you done told him. Well, Pastor, I got unforgiveness against, uh, against Keely. Okay. Well, what you gonna do about it? I ain't gonna do nothing about it. I ain't got no unforgiveness against Keely. Amen. That's you. That's your father Amen. that ain't covering you no more. Abba. That's your father who ain't forgiving your sins anymore. Wow. So why, why would I put myself in that predicament when I do know and understand that if I forgive, then my heavenly father will forgive me. Amen. That's why I say there's nothing so bad that you got the whole forgive unforgiveness in your heart toward Amen. people. Because they come and they go. And as long as you're in this walk, my mama always told me, she told me, she said, daughter, as long as you're in this walk, you're going to always be offended and you're going to always be <laughs> trampled upon. You're going to always be talked about, lied on, and act, you know, all the accusations going to come, all these things. And, and you're going to always find people who ain't going to like you, people who are going to have something to say about what you say, uh, say about what you do, what you wear, what you look like, and everything else. There's nobody ever satisfied, so why not just stay with God? <laughs> Why not just please God Because he's the easiest person to please yeah. Because you cannot please people And you never will be able to please people I don't care how You think you got them wrapped around your little finger You cannot You can never please them Wow, wow. never So why not use that energy And please the Lord 
Why not in, and use that energy and, and love on the Lord? Why not use that energy and, and, and do and work for the Lord? Amen. That's energy. Amen. That's energy. So it says in um, Matthew 6 and 14, thank you, Matthew 6 and 14, it says, well, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The same thing I read here in Mark 11 and 21. That's the one that came to me at that, at that point in time. So Matthew 18, 35 says, this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. Mm. Matthew 18, 35. Can you do me a message? Let me see what message said that because I don't know if that thing was a little bit deep. I said it's real good in the, in the King James. <laughs> and that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who doesn't forgive. <laughs> Unconditionally, anyone who asks for mercy. Wow. Anyone. And I go on to say, not add anything to the Bible, but I go on to say those who don't even know how to ask for mercy. Amen. Because everybody you hold on forgiveness for ain't in the church. And they might not even know the Lord. And they don't even know that you got unforgiveness in your heart toward them. They don't even know how you feel about them. Until you, get, until you begin to tell them how, how, how you feel about them. So that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each and one of us. He doesn't forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. So he ain't going to forgive us. So when we don't forgive others for their offenses against us, we close the door on being able to receive God's forgiveness for our sins against him. Wow. We sin against the Lord when we hold on to forgiveness. And that's why I said, well, well, and a lot of us want to say, well, well, why I'm blessed, God? Well, why I'm blessed? Well, why the Lord blesses me with this? I told you he's going to give you the necessities of your life. He's a just God. Amen. He's a merciful God. Yeah. So whatever, that, whatever the need is in your life, there are four or five of my, and I told you that on my last few, because a lot of people get this uh, being blessed with these natural material things. They think that, that God is blessing. No. No. That, God, that that's a blessing. From God, but no, that's a need that you have in your life that God just sees that you need. He raises the just as well as the unjust. He gives the sinner a house, a roof over his head, and a car to ride in a job. Amen. 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 Yes, he does. Amen. Ah. Amen. So, so we have to make sure that we understand the, the concept of, of, of what we are in and what we're doing. So we want to make sure that uh, the, we close the door on being able to receive God's forgiveness and, and for, for our sins against Him. So I don't know about you, we don't want to sin against God. Our forgiveness helps us to sin against God. So when we forgive others, we are free to approach God's throne of grace with confidence and assurance. And this is the question a lot of people ask, well, how do I know that I, I still got unforgiveness in my heart? You only know that. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. And Jesus, he know your heart. <laughs> but you only know that. If you got, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's there, you know it's there. If it's still there, you know it's there. If it's still tantalizing you, you know it's there. If, it's, if it still comes up in your, in your mind every uh, uh, 30 seconds, you know it's still there. If it's still uh, haunting you every time you get ready to move in God and move forward in God, this thing comes up, then, then yes, you know it's still there. But you are the only one who really knows it's there. Because it's easy, because it's a hard thing. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness is a hard thing. So it can be hid. You can do the church thing. You can do the prayer thing. You can do the preaching thing. You can do all these things. We can do all these things in the body of Christ and still have unforgiveness in our heart. <laughs> Dancing around it. So Hebrews 4 and 16 says in the New NIV, it says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So I can't come to the brother to the throne room of God boldly because of my sins, because of my unforgiveness. But if I forgive, and if I'm truly forgiven, and I'm free from unforgiveness, totally free from unforgiveness, then I can come boldly before the throne of God. So I, I let him walk. He said, so let us walk right up to him and get what he, he, what he is so ready to give us. And we can only do that by uh, not holding unforgiveness in our heart. Right. And he says, take mercy. Accept the help. So God wants to give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He wants to give you what, what, what he wants to give because he just wants you to have whatever you want or whatever you need. He wants you to have that. 
But then there is, he cannot go against his word because there are some places where the principles and the repercussions of him not doing what his word says, then it would throw everything off. Right. So he, he, he can't do everything we want him to do. The next one is bitterness. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, we go mercy uh, message. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 14 and 15. Bitterness <clears throat> says, work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for the weeds of bitterness and discontent. A thistle or two bone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Mm. Yep. Make every effort, this is the King James Version, make every effort to live in peace with all men. Ah. Amen. And to be holy. Mm -hmm. It says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's it. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Bitterness is the result of long-term unforgiveness. Yes, it is. When you have long-term unforgiveness, it's easy for you to be bitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. About anything and everything. Bitter. It becomes like a cancer of the soul. Making us resentful. Look at it now. Catch this. Making us resentful making us fearful, and making us unbelieving. So look what happens to us when there is unforgiveness, when there's bitterness in us. It is a byproduct of unforgiveness. So when bitterness is there, we are too fearful to walk out in the things of God. We, we, we're not going to walk out like we should. We, we, we are easily uh, um, to get into a place of unbelief and, and not believe what the word says or not believe what God is saying, not believe in what God is doing. We're easy to be moved and, and we're easy to be resentful of the process or the progress of others. Huh. Anybody who's bitter will always be resentful. Yes, ma'am. And they will always look at other people mm. and ask, why, why them? Why, them? why not me? What well, did you ever think about you just bitter? Oh, okay, did, did you ever think that you, that, you, that this is a byproduct of your unforgiveness? That you hold an unforgiveness? Jesus. Have you ever thought about that? No. So you so 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 you have to make sure that you understand that this is what happens, making us unforgetful, un unbelieving, making us not to believe in God and the things of God. That's, and, and that's the reason why I know that the body of Christ, why, why things are not moving, that people want to stay churchy. Yeah. Because in the churchy, in the sanctuary, in the churchy, in the churchy sanctuary, we can hold all this stuff in. Oh, yeah. In the church, but, but, but the kingdom requires you to come out. The, the kingdom requires you to get something done about that thing. The kingdom requires you to get delivered. The kingdom requires you to open up your heart and your mind and your spirit to the Lord. The kingdom will push you where the church will leave you where you are. And that's the reason why nobody wanted to walk in the kingdom of God is because the kingdom of God requires too much of our bitter selves. The kingdom of God requires too much of our unforgiven selves. And our unbelief in self. But so, so all these things begin to happen. And that's the reason why the church becomes weak. Uh, because people are not understanding that unforgiveness and bitterness is a sin. And you need to get delivered from that. Oh, yeah. And there are too many people in the body of Christ who are bitter and holding unforgiveness for, for something that somebody did. Yeah. 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 Walking around. Hating people. Yes, I mean, this is, these are church-going folk. I've been in the Lord a long time, but I don't like you. If you got the nerve to say you don't like somebody and you're in the body of Christ, uh -huh. you are holding on forget forgiveness and you have bitterness in you. That's right. You got, you got a problem. There's something going on with you that needs to be dealt with. 
You need to go to the Lord and ask the Lord to deal with you. You need to go to the Lord and ask the Lord to deliver you, to, to handle this thing that's killing you. It's like a cancer that's eating away at you. And you don't want to be walking with God with cancer. Oh. Raising your hands in the sanctuary, praising the Lord, coming to church, and you are dying and, and wrecked, and your body is wrecked with cancer, cancer of bitterness, cancer of unforgiveness, cancer of resentment, cancer of unbelief. <coughs> And then we wonder why the church ain't got no power. You cannot have power. There is no power when all these things have taken over. When they are moving in us and through us. And every time somebody can just come by and stomp your toe, you don't like them no more. Oh, no. No, no. Uh huh. Somebody can come and say the wrong thing to you that you didn't really care for, you didn't like. Now nah, I don't like her. I, you know, I, 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 I figured it was like that. I just, I'm, I'm not going to even deal. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to deal with nothing. I'm, and see, this is the thing you have to keep, you have to understand, is that you got to stay covered. If you're not going to stay covered, then all these things are going to eat you up. Amen. Amen. They're going to eat you alive to the point where you are not going to be able to live the life that God has called for you to live. And I don't, and then this is what you have to really understand. It is a waste of time. It, it is just a really a waste of time to come out to the house of the Lord, to say I'm living for God and I got unforgiveness and I got bitterness in my heart. It is a waste of time to say I'm going to have a relationship with God and I'm going through the motions of church and doing this and doing that, but I got unforgiveness in my heart. I'm bitter. And bitter people always bring up the past. Living in the past. Always talking about the past. Always talking about what I could have did, should have did, done have did. But let me help you right there. Forget that. Get delivered from that bitterness and that unforgiveness and see the salvation of the Lord. That it ain't what the person who, who stopped you in the, or whatever you got your unforgiveness, not the person who stopped you. You stopped your own self. Ain't nobody put no guns in your head to make you do nothing. And unforgiveness and bitterness is always blame. It's a blame game. You're always blaming somebody for what's your problem and for what's going on in your life and for what God is not doing. You always got the, this, this, this serious uh, at, attitude about, if, well, if it wasn't for this, then I wouldn't be this. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't have this. No, 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 no. No, you are where you are because God set you where you are. Right. You are in the place that you're in because God set you in the place. Amen. See, because one thing I do know that if God really has need of you, he'll break you. Oh, yes. <laughs> he'll break you down. Amen. And he'll break you and he'll keep breaking you. And that's the reason why you're trying to figure out well, why I'm always going through. Well, why this is always happening. Why this stuff is always... God is breaking you. He's trying to break you to the point where you can understand when, when you're going to quit trying to keep going and here I am calling you and touching you and breaking you and you still running. You still running. You're still trying to do it on your own. You're still trying to help him, help everything. You're still trying to make everything happen. You're still trying to live on your own. But God is saying, no, no, no. Either you're going to live or no, you're not going to live. So bitterness, we got to rid ourselves. we got to rid ourselves of the long-standing bitterness may, that may require the assistance and intervention of a mature Christian and brother and sister. This is one thing I do realize and understand is that there are some people in your lives who can tell you exactly the way you are and you'll listen to them. Right? And they speak for God. Because you ain't going to listen to nobody else and you ain't going to hear nobody else. And when that individual tells you and when that individual talks to you and lets you know, well, you know what? You need to, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, this that, and that, and the other. But the thing is, you have to do it because God has sent someone to help. Right. Yeah. He sent his word. Yes. his word. And his word is medicine. Yeah. The Greek word is help. Mm -hmm. The word, he sent his word and he healed me. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and it brought, it was like medicine unto my unforgiveness. Jesus. 
Yeah. He brought his word and it healed me. It was like medicine to my bitterness. Yeah. And it's pushing up out of me. It's pushing up out of me that I know that's what's in me. It's talking to me. It's, it's, it's dealing with me to the point where I know I've got to do something sooner or later. But I hope it's sooner than it is later. But God is calling us out of this unforgiveness. He's calling us out of this bitterness. Come on out. Come out, said the Lord. Come out. Amen. So repentance and prayer in the authority of Jesus' name can break the power of bitterness in your life. Wow. So you mean, Tim, all it is just pray, repent, and ask God to forgive me for being bitter? Uh -huh. Yeah. All you got to do is start walking and believing. Yeah. It's just that simple. And I know some of y'all don't understand how, how can something be so simple that seems so hard to me. Mm -hmm. A lot of things in your life you have made it hard because it's so simple. Yes. I make it hard. It's foolishness to you because you're trying to make sense of it. Yes. And every time you try to make sense of it, and because it's so foolish, you're trying to make sense of it of your mindset, your mind, your finite mind, or the infinite, infinite uh, ability of God. We're trying to bring it down to our level. And if it don't fit our level, then we don't think it's God. Right. If it don't fit our level, then we don't do nothing about it. Right. If, we don't, if it don't fit our level, then we don't change. It's true. It's true. There's no transformation that takes place. There's no metamorphosis that, that takes place. So because every time, and this is what the word is supposed to do. Because the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And because it is quick, alive, active, and full of power, the word of God is supposed to heal me every time I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. But if the unforgiveness, if the bitterness, resentment, and unbelief is bigger than that, then it's not going to be able to receive. You're not going to receive the word of God because those things are blocking what you're trying to hear. Yeah. It's almost like it gets in all of that and it's all tangled up and, and balled up and, and all mixed together. You're trying to disciple it. And see, because what happens is unforgiveness and bitterness and unbelief and resentment will go against the truth of God. And that's the reason why you have to make sure that you are not in these places because if you are in these places, you will never believe the truth of God. It won't let you. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It won't let you. That's why you have people who've been saved for a long time, but they still do still in the same predicament. They've been, they've been trying to serve God for they've been trying to serve God for a long time, but they're still in the same predicament. Well, they got to understand that as long as you're in that stuff, as long as those things are in your life, you will never hear the truth right. And you will never be able to receive it. You will never be able to apply it. No. And you certainly won't have no faith in it. So the next one, hindrance to prayer, is heart idols. Heart idols. Heart idols. Heart idols. Heart idols. Ezekiel 14. And three. I'm going to read it from the King James Version and then I'm going to read it from the message. Ezekiel 13 and 3. He says, Son of man, and hard idols are nothing but covetousness. The spirit of covetousness. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them require, inquire of me at all? Therefore, speak to them and tell them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. When any Israelite sets up idols in his heart and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and then goes to a prophet, I the Lord will answer him in, in I the Lord my I the Lord himself my I the Lord will answer him myself in the people of Israel who have all deserted me for their idols. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is the what the sovereign Lord says. Repent and turn from your idols and renounce all your detestable practices. And when any Israelite or any alien living in Israel separates himself from me, set up idols in his heart and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and then goes to a prophet to inquire me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. That's dangerous. You mean to tell me I got idols? If I got idols in my heart, mm. and I can go to my sister and brother trying to get some comfort, or, so, or I go to another pastor trying to get some comfort, I go to anybody in the five-fold ministry trying to get some comfort, 
And you mean to tell me because of the idol in my heart, that prophet can't speak? That's what he said. That's why that prophet ain't going to, if he speak to you, he a lying prophet. Oh, yeah. If he say anything to you, he's a lying prophet. And that's why that's why he kept saying, no, I, the Lord, will come and speak to you. I don't need a prophet to deal with you on this. So this must be real serious with God. Well, you know, of course, it is. you know, when, uh, when, when <laughs> in, the, in the book of Exodus, when they came out and when uh, Moses went to the top of the hill and they came back and they was in one of them, uh, uh, all this stuff they was in, they had got this idol and they had started worshiping this idol. And just, just think, what, look, look what God had did, brought them out of Egypt, brought them across the Red Sea, dry footed, brought them across the wilderness. Their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out. There was food every day. God did all these things by night, a cloud by day, and, a, and, a, and fire by night. He did all of these things, and then yet they still got to the promised land, almost to the promised land. And when Moses got out of sight, they began to be covetous of what they had left. Yeah, they sure did. Amen. They wanted it back. Mm. They wanted that life back. Mm. They wanted that lifestyle back. Yeah. They wanted to do what they had been doing. Right. But God was requiring something deeper. He was requiring something more of them. So he says, Son of man, he says in the message, that Son of man, these people have installed idols in their hearts and they have embraced wickedness that will ruin them. So why should I even bother with their prayers? Ooh. Hindrances to prayers. Therefore tell them the message of God, the master, all the Israel who install idols in their hearts and embrace the wickedness that will ruin them and still have the call to come to a prophet, be on notice. I, God, will step in and personally answer them as they come dragging them along their mobs of idols. And I look at today, people running down prophets. Trying to get a word. Get a word. Want to get a word? I need a word from the Lord. I, and, and, and all uh, and, and always in somebody's face that they don't know that's new, hoping that somebody's gonna talk to them about something. Wow. <laughs> they ain't gonna tell you nothing that ain't already been told to you either in the word or by your leaders. By your leaders. What? And if they're holding idols, and if you're holding any idols in your heart, if there's any idol that's there in your heart, then God is not God's gonna talk to you personally. He will deal with you. He will begin to deal. And see, you know, you said, you know, your husband can be an idol. Your children can be idols. Anything you put before God is an idol. Amen. Anything that takes more time than God is an idol. Anything that you set and, and, and set it in place and you worship it. On a daily basis, and it's taking all your time from God. You giving God uh, maybe an hour a day, but you giving your idols twenty four hours. That 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 that's twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. That's twenty six hours. That that could be, could it? But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Twenty three hours. Twenty three. God one. Everything else twenty three. But we try to get we try to get twenty two. We try to get twenty four hours. We try to get twenty four hours. We try to get twenty eight hours out of twenty four hours of worship of our idols. So, just, you know, so, so it is something that we, we must come in, you know, in, 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 in realization and say, well, what, what is my idol? What's my idol? Anything you put before God is an idol. Anything you do more than you do for God is an idol. Anything you, you come in contact more than God is an idol. Anything that you deal with more than God is an idol. Anything that you know that takes the place of what you should be doing for God or, in, or what you should be practicing with God, but you don't do it because you're too busy doing other things, that's idleness. You, are, you, you got an idol. Amen. Amen. So God's going to see, because he was serious about this thing. I said, it's the, oh, he's serious. He said, no, I, no, no, you ain't going to speak prophet. No, I'm going to speak to them. And he says, I thought would step in and personally answer them as they come along dragging them all the idols. I am ready to go to work on the hearts of the house of Israel. I am ready to go to work on the house of, of Agape. Amen. I'm ready to go to work on the hearts of the house of Agape. Yes. All of whom have left me for their idols. Jesus. Jesus. 
Ooh, we Jesus. I don't have time to really break this down because I can say a lot of things tonight. That we've been idolizing like crazy. <laughs> I mean, it is an idol. You, you, you ain't paying attention to it as an idol, but it is an idol. You have not considered it as an idol, but it is an idol. You have thought it's just something that just, you know, that just, oh, it's, it's, it's just pleasure. This is just uh, 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 something to do. This is something just, you know. I mean, TV can be an idol. You watch too much TV. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 Anything you do too much of <laughs> has become an idol. And God going to deal with us. Next verse. So he says that I am ready to go. Therefore, say to the Lord, say it, say it to the house of Israel. God, the master says, repent. Turn your backs on your no God idols. I like that. Your no God idols. No God idols. If, they ain't no, if they're not God, they ain't got anything to do with them, then they idols. Your no God idols. Turn your backs on your outrageous obscenities. Uh -huh. To every last person from the house of Israel, of the house of Agape, including any of the residents or the aliens who live in Agape or in this area, in this region, and all who turn their backs on me and embrace idols, who install the wickedness that will ruin them at the center of their lives, and then have the gall to go to the prophet to ask me questions. Hey, oh, wow. Wow. Prophet, oh, prophet, prophet, prophet. But what, what is the Lord saying? Oh, well, I'm trying to do some trying to do that, but prophet, what is the Lord saying? Get rid of your idols. That's what he said. He got no cars, houses, and lands for you. No. He got, he ain't got them, 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 them sweet answers you want to hear. He says, I, God, will step in and give the answer myself. I oppose those people to their faces. Make an example of them. A warning lesson. And get rid of them so you will realize that I am God. Now, that's the part right there. When you get rid of the idols, then you will know that I am God. This is a place that we become kingdom. That God becomes big, becomes first, becomes all in all. The I am, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There's nothing between that unless it's God. There's nothing, there's nothing at the beginning of that unless it's God. At the end of it, unless it's God. If it's taking too much of my time in between, in the beginning, at the end, in between, then it's an idol. So he says, get rid of them so you will realize that I am God. A lot of people don't, don't realize God is God or that God is in their lives or in their midst because of so many idols. So much idol worship going on. So anytime we put something ahead of God and time with him, we are setting up idols in our heart. That's the reason why we, this is, this is why we say what we say, putting God first and causing others to do the same. If God is not first in the morning when you wake up, then what's in your first? If that's, that's your idol. You just substituted the first thing that should be first with an idol. Well, I'm going to get to it. No, you just idolized your, what, your first impression when you got up. I mean, it's so simple. It just is what it is. Is sleep your idol? And you're done. You're struggling to get up. And you're struggling to get before the Lord. You're struggling to pray. That's a, I mean, that's an idol. That, that's more important. Just give me five more minutes. Give me ten more minutes. Give me fifteen more minutes. By the time you get through, you're going to get an hour. A snoozer. Oh, hit that button ten times. Oh. I know. I know. Help us, Lord. Burn it up, Lord. Burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up. Running out of money. I know. Not believing God for your substance, for your livelihood. Money. I know. That's why God can't give you no more, because you 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 idolizing what you what you you put that other stuff before Him, trying to get what you're trying to get by yourself. When God says, "I'll do whatever you need for me to do," all you got to do is ask. But because of your idols, 
I can't do nothing for you. I, 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 you didn't get rid of him so, so you can realize that I'm God. You don't realize he's God. Come on. I can't realize that God is God with yeah. idols in my life. Because you know what? My idols are the ones that I know can help me. Yeah. When they got down, when they made that calf of gold, they were in their mindset that that calf of gold could do whatever they needed it to do for them. That's, that's, what, that's what they said. They, 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 that's what they said. They brought us out. That brought us out. The calf. A gold calf that brought me out of Egypt. 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 What? How can a gold calf bring you out of Ain't no gold calf. The gold calf did not bring you out. That you made. <laughs> that you made. <laughs> Mama ain't brought you out. Daddy ain't brought you out. Sister, brother, husband, and wife, children, and nobody brought you out but God. But God. But God. Idols. Yeah. And so we're coveting everything somebody else has. So we want to be, you know, so this is a little cliche. We just we want to keep up with the Joneses. And all you're doing is coveting. That's all you're doing. You are idolizing what someone else has, and you can't even realize that God can do with the same thing for you. It's the idols. We must be sure that God is first in our relationships, and first in our time, and first in our commitments. If God is not first in your commitment, your relationship with him, or your relationship with anybody else, or a husband and wife, whatever you are, whatever it is, your relationship ain't nothing but an idol. Because you're covered in something that only God can give you. Oh, come on, man. You idolizing your husband because your, you think your husband can comfort you, make things right for you, make you feel good, all this type of stuff, baby. All right. That's the reason why you ain't realize that God is God yet. Because I'm going to tell you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. And we up all night crying about this and up all night crying about this joker and this sister, Mr. 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 Muscle and all this type of stuff. We up crying all night long about a relationship. And we, baby, if you know God, that's all you need to know. Oh, oh my Lord. And we are running around trying to get all these other things. We are running around trying to touch this and touch that. And want it to touch us back and all this type of stuff. Come on, somebody. Y'all need to understand that that's an idol. You are coveting something that you want, you think you need, but you need Jesus. Right. Baby, you need Jesus. You done left Jesus. You done left the presence of the Lord. You don't even realize that he's God no more because you got too many idols. Want to do it? Don't he love us? He yes. loves us more than anything. Yes. He loves us enough to bring a word like this. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Because he wants more of you. He wants to get closer to you. He, he, he wants to. He wants you to wear him like a skin. Yes. Yes. That's what God wants. He wants you to wear him like a skin. I ain't say clothes. I should pull them off. You can't pull the skin off. You can't separate the skin from the body unless you skin it off. And that's why the presence of God, the God God, should be like a skin that you wear every day, everywhere, so that there would be no idols that you would set up in your life along the way. Because God, if he's a skin, that means he's closer than anything. Nothing can get between the skin and my flesh. That's right. There ain't no room in that. Come on, God. So I oppose those people to their faces, making them an example of them, a warning lesson. And get rid of them so you will realize that God is God. So you will realize that God is God. First in relationship, first in time, and first in commitment. Got it. Gosh. Oh Lord, is that it? 
Woo, I'm going to run well my time. Oh, we worship, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Woo, all right, okay. We, we good. One more. I'm, uh, I ain't going to finish it. One more. <laughs> Let me do this one more. This next hit of us is stinginess. What? What you say now? No. Woo. Woo. The body of Christ is full of some of the selfishest people. Some of the most stingiest people that you ever want to meet. Buddha know what it means to kill. Amen. Muhammad know what it is to give. And to be selfless. All these gods that are dead and in the ground, that these people are worshiping. But we that serve the true and living God, we are some of the most selfishest people. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Because we got too many idols. We got we, we to prepare and take care of them idols. And whatever it takes for us to take care of them idols, we'll spend it on it. Sacrifice for your eyes. That's it. <laughs> we'll take pleasure in our idols before we'll serve and take pleasure in giving God what belongs to Him. For this stinginess, Proverbs 21 13. If a man shut his ears to the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. Wow. Acts 10 4. Canila stared. At him in fear, what is it, Lord? The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up to me as a memorial offered before the Lord. Acts 10, 4. Kingdom. Now, now you're stepping into kingdom again. Church. Selfish. Stingy. Kingdom. Open. To give. Prayer is essentially coming to God and asking him to give us what we need. If you're not getting what you need from God, who are you getting it from? Oh. Who's supplying you? You're supplying yourself. <laughs> That's the bottom line, because God ain't supplying you because you know why? You know, you talk. See, this is the difference. When God supplies you, it graciously overtakes you, run you down, walk all over you, and then get in front of you and say, all of you. This belongs to you. Yeah. Amen. But when you do it, you talk. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what happened with Adam and Eve. Says they were tall for the rest of their lives. Yeah. When he said they will work. They'll sweat the brow, they'll work a job mm. and toll. Yeah. And see, what's supposed to happen with us, even though God, even though you got a job to work, mm -hmm. but it was never meant for you to toll the job. No, and what I mean by that, it was never meant for the job to be your source. Right, right. Amen. Right, right. It ain't never meant to be your source. No, the man. job ain't never meant to be your source. Mm -hmm. But my faith, my faith in God elevates my job to the place where uh, promotions and extra bonuses is. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's the blessings of God. Toiling just go from paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and never get nothing extra. You don't work that for years, they never gave you nothing extra. Mm -hmm. And never put a bonus in your hand. Wow. Just over the button. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make sure mm -hmm. that we know what's really happening here. So if we are aware of needs in other people's lives and haven't responded to help them, we will not be able we will not be able to act in faith. So that helps us too. That right there, the needs of others will help us to walk in faith better. We need to be compassionate and generous concerning the needs of others. We need to give, serve, and care whenever we have the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 I'm gonna stop right there. Because the, the next one requires a little bit too much time. God. This